Okay, so I've been trying to get more power into my Raspberry Pi uh, because if I use an on-the-go adapter, uh, which is needed for the Windows 10 installation, uh, there isn't really quite enough power going into the Pi. Uh, so I thought I'd experiment with getting different power sources into the Pi. I came across this on uh, Marsan's blog, and this was to do with Windows 10 running on a Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, but this can be useful for other applications as well. But you can see in the picture, he's got uh, power going into the GPIO uh, ports on there. But there's also power going in through the USB-C hub as well. So two lots of power going in. I figured that would be enough to be able to use my SSD drive, my keyboard, and any other accessory that I want to go in there. So what I did, uh, I needed to get... Uh, little pins and I didn't have any little pins but I did find uh, a car wiring loom uh, in my garage which I've had for ages and so I took out the red and the black cable uh, very neatly with some clippers and uh, I also had this USB on the go adapter which has never worked so I took the little micro USB off that Let's see if I can zoom into that so the little micro USB and then you can see that I've got the red and the black and the white and the green, which is for data. So I don't need that. I just need power. Uh, and then I've just connected it up with these little block connectors. Uh, and then I've got a USB, a little micro USB socket to USB A. So that can plug into my power adapter. I also have this micro USB to USB C as well, because I've got other power adapters that use USB C. So let's have a look and see what happens. So this is purely being powered by the two pins. And this is uh, Raspbian, but it's also got RetroPie installed in it. That's why it launches with the RetroPie screen and then goes back over to Raspbian. And this build isn't reporting any, you're not getting any lightning bolt. You'd be looking for a lightning bolt on the top corner. I'll just turn on my screen capture so I can switch to that when needed. So screen capture's on now. Uh, so if I was to plug in my SSD drive, through the USB 3 socket. Let's see if we can get that lightning bolt to show up. Removal medium. Well, oh, it doesn't. It's a bit weird that it's a one point foot, you know, just a normal uh, adapter and it still doesn't struggle. Let's start up Chromium. So still, I've still not got an issue, still nothing coming up. Uh, but the reason that I'm doing this is not for Raspbian, because Raspbian, uh, you can just use an ordinary USB-C in. This is more for the Windows system. So let's close this down, and I'll show you what happens. So I've unplugged the power going through the GPIO pins. I had a comment from Amir Dahan uh, about Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi, so the WOR. Uh, and uh, I've got some great news. Windows 10 for Raspberry Pi is now working smooth out of the box with minimal user input. Now his version, he uses on Raspberry Pi 3, uh, and I've got a Raspberry Pi 4. So I did say, is it going to work? And he said, well, you can try it. Uh, so I tried it, and it does actually work. And I'll do another video more showing this version of Windows, because I haven't really played around with it enough. This is more about the power issue. So the reason that there isn't enough power. So this is the official Raspberry Pi USB-C adapter. This is my SSD drive, which has got Windows 10 on it. That's my mouse and keyboard trackpad, and it's going through the USB-C input. Uh, and then we've got HDMI out, obviously. So at the moment, I'm not using this extra power, but you can use both lots of power at the same time. Again, I'm not advising anybody do this, read thoroughly through it, but I did see a guide that said that it takes as much power as it feels it needs through the GPIO pins. I'm only using a five volt adapter, so it shouldn't overload it, but I don't want to brick anybody's pie and I don't want anybody sort of messing about with this if you don't know what you're doing. Um, so, as I say, it's your equipment. Do, is, do, do this at your own risk. Uh, it's up to you. Um, but if I now boot up, so this new version of Windows 10, just by plugging in the official Raspberry Pi adapter. So I've only got one lot of power in there at the moment. So let's back up and show you the monitor. So... This version is running from SSD, but it's booting from the SD card. So what we should find is that we get the lightning bolt coming up. Uh, and it was earlier on, so I'm sure it will. So this is just booting in. That was the bootloader. So this is just booting into Windows now. Hmm. 
there you go. So the lightning bolt comes up. So what that means is it's not enough power. And you can sometimes get weird uh, problems with the keyboard. If there's not enough power, sometimes when you put your password in, it will do too many digits or it will keep a key stuck down. Uh, and it also can greatly affect the performance of Windows 10 on Raspberry Pi. Obviously, the fact that it's only running on one gig is also an issue. Um, but uh, this build is a very light build and uh, everything's been stripped out. But uh, hopefully all the essentials have been left in. But you can see that it's already struggling. The lightning bolt is on the screen uh, almost constantly. So what I'll do is I'll wait for it to come back on again and then I'll plug in the extra power that I've got. So at the moment I'm just running from USB-C, going through the on-the-go adapter, powering the Pi, but also powering my SSD, also powering my mouse and keyboard, uh, and so it's, it's all a bit of a strain. So it's booted up and it's working. Uh, so if I call up, you can see very basic here. There you go, so it's come on again. So I'm gonna plug in this. So now, in theory, uh, from everything I've read, the lightning bolt should come up less. Now, this is only using a 1.5 amp adapter, and so I can use a higher one. The one next to it, the, the four port adapter, which has got my screen capture device in it, has got 2.4 amps, so I could plug it into that, and I'm gonna kind of experiment with it, but I thought people would wanna see uh, a Raspberry Pi given more power. A lot of makers do this for motors and various different builds and things like that anyway. Uh, it's just something I haven't ventured down. But having seen that on Marsan's blog, I knew that the bottleneck was going to be... Yeah, the lightning bolt hasn't come up, has it? So I think it probably, even with this, is probably still enough. So if I get Task Manager up, let's just screen capture this. Processes, performance, app history, startup. So I'm screen capturing now, so I'll switch over to that. Uh, so if I go to performance, so what have we got? It's definitely using less memory than the other builds that I've had. That's disk usage, CPU 100%. I'm still overclocked and I, I probably oughtn't be. Uh, so Amir had said to run at a lower clock speed uh, to, to reduce the voltage, but then I don't, we haven't had a chat about me using two lots of power. So that lightning bolt's definitely not up there. Now there's not a lot on here to be able to show you, but let's just see what the performance is like. So I've just clicked on folders, pictures, documents, downloads, home, share, view. It does feel snappy. So this combination could be really good. Oh, I don't know what I clicked on then. What did I click on then to make it do that? Oh, settings. So if I click on settings and say system, yeah, it is, it is running pretty well. I haven't put any internet in this yet, but I've got various different ways of doing that with either a, a USB Ethernet adapter or I can do it via Bluetooth if you check back through all my WR Windows videos. But uh, looking good so far. I'm not going to do any more on the Windows bit because I think this build deserves its own video and also I want to see if I can get some things on there. There's nothing to scroll up and down on there. Uh, but it is a super, super light build. And, uh, and yeah, I have great hopes for it. Anyway, I hope this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.